Because of, of what they do, these guys here are definitely trying to get away now, and they're unpredictable. So you have to think of every, every scenario. The officer down below behind them has to think of every, every scenario that's possible. Are they going to bail out, run across the freeway? Are they going to uh, ram somebody and try to carjack a, a fresh car? We've seen that happen. And, but right now, these guys, they, they don't seem like they're, they're destined to try to take somebody else's car. Of course, they'll probably prove me wrong here, but uh, I could see them very easily just jumping out of this car and taking off in two directions and trying to split up to you know, try to get the officers not to be able to stay with both of them. But uh, right now, two helicopters from LAPD overhead, so they've already coordinated with themselves who's taking what. So one's de uh, dedicated to the driver, one's dedicated to the, to the passenger, and they will uh, stick with their suspects and then direct ground units to them. So uh, they're setting up for every contingency here that they can. Coming up to uh, Echo Park here, Echo Park Lake, Sunset goes through here and uh, still working its way along. Traffic is going to loosen up here just a little bit as we cross over, I believe, Sunset or no, Glendale, over Glendale, and uh, uh, he'll be able to pick up a little speed to see what that, that right front tire does. But also he's got that big sail hanging out behind him on the uh, convertible. You see one of the air units going through our shot. So we're just kind of holding above them. Actually, we just made the transition from the four level, the southbound 101 to the southbound uh, 110, heading back the direction we came here through the downtown slot. This will take us through the, the downtown building, southbound on the uh, 110 now approaching 3rd Street. Now, we've been on this pursuit for a better part of an hour, 10 minutes now. As it started off down there in Cerritos, as you said, a very wild pursuit. The uh, rain started just prior to this pursuit starting, so they're dealing with the rain. Uh, as well as the slippery roads. This guy's driving habits are very, very poor, and his ability with this vehicle has a very uh, strong engine and a very powerful engine. He keeps losing control, and at that one point during our pursuit, he uh, even did uh, donuts in the middle of uh, Hollywood Boulevard over the 101, and then uh, kind of uh, poked his way around and then was sliding out the rear end. But these two guys are just uh, doing, doing our bit. You can see the tires starting to come off that rim you see the rim there? It's going to start uh, uh, dragging the ground. Then eventually you'll start seeing sparks coming off. There goes parts of the rim right now. He's, yeah, he, see, he's torn up the, the rim. Yeah, he's torn up the rim. So he had, that, that wheel is not even on the ground anymore Good, doing any good here. So um, so it's uh, it's not going to not gonna be good for that. He still has the other tire. Hopefully they can uh, do a little more damage to him as uh, he comes down through the downtown slot here. Bad time of day, 3 o'clock, this is when the, the rush hour starts. And, you know, it never is really good on the 110 freeway here in the downtown slot between the 101 and the uh, 10 freeway. And you see that tire right front rim not even moving. You saw a big chunk of it come flying off. 
So now uh, he's just riding on that one, the left front tire for steering ability. And then uh, the two back tires apparently are okay. But he's not going to be able to maneuver or stop like he did before. There was one point he was at a pretty good rate of speed, came up on stop traffic, and really buried the brakes trying to stop it and was just able to get it stopped in time. But that's gone away. He's not going to be able to do that. So uh, it's a... Uh, it's not going to be good for the drivers around him if he starts picking up speed. But we're southbound, probably coming up on about uh, 6th Street now, working our way through. Uh, yeah, that's 6th Street right there, and it's coming on. Come, continuing down south here as we get ahead of him just a little bit and and uh, try to work him away. Uh, Mark and Lou, I'm going to send it back down to you. I'm going to have to deal with L.A. Tower again, LAX Airspace, and let me work with them, and I'll be right back with you. Spike strip was thrown down that punctured the tire, and they kept going for a really long time, probably 20, 30 minutes, but now that rim, the rubber is completely burned off, and they are driving on that rim, um, having to go again at slower speeds here, um, and the steering must be difficult. It's a powerful Ford Mustang. Um, he's having to be really careful uh, with a combination of things. There's uh, slick roads because of the rain, and now he only has essentially three tires, and the steering on it has to be pretty difficult as well. We've seen him spin out several times, sometimes intentionally, sometimes not. I think not knowing how to drive the car probably. Um, Tim Lynn, it sounds like you're back with us. Yeah, well, I'm back with you. We're coming up on the 10 freeway here. We're going to see which way he's going to go. And if he continues south on the 110 freeway, then we have to get through LAX. But it uh, looks like he's kind of holding that right-hand shoulder, just kind of holding it here to see which way he goes. But yeah, you're right. It, they're just teasing the police teasing the police and just kind of mugging for the cameras and, and just working their way along but yeah that right front tire is done so it's just have to deal with uh, what uh, what's going to what's it's going to come to an end here so Tim, yeah, Lou, I got to send it back to you Towers calling me okay what were you going to ask Mark well I was just curious to ask him what the protocol would be is a vehicle that doesn't have the use of mm -hmm. their their front right tire is somewhere near the Hollywood Hills when officers put down that spike strip and that's why the rubber has now pulled off of that all right it looks like they're wheel, actually getting off the like freeway now off. we don't have Tim with us right now so we don't know exactly what exit this is but this is probably you know if a smart move is going to happen for them to get off and sort of figure out what's going on here maybe where they can stop and get into an area covered with trees possibly and, and make a run for it um, 
really in this situation you never really know what these guys and women are doing my um, guesstimate would be I, they were on the other side of the freeway I would say where you could probably see that Ritz Carlton Hotel mm. kind of near where Staples Center is so that's on the other yeah, side of the freeway that's on the other side and it does appear uh, Tim Lynn uh, overhead and sky five right now Tim are you back with us yeah he just he just uh, transitioned I believe this is on the Figueroa he jumped off the freeway there and uh, kind of jumped across and now he's I believe he's on Figueroa you're gonna see uh, parts of the USC coming through here in a second uh, southbound Figueroa approaching I believe Adams and so uh, he's gonna work his way through the surf surface area of the of the free of the uh, LAPD or the LAX area and I'm having listened to you and the tower at the same <laughs> time here so uh, yeah he's, he's in the in the student area now uh, south of Adams southbound Figueroa a uh, very slow rate of speed. We're having to hold back and let the LAPD air units to get ahead of us so we can all drop down to a lower level. Uh, we've been flying above the uh, PD helicopters for uh, mo most of these, uh, uh, the way on this pursuit, now we have to get down really low to get underneath the big jets coming into LA. So we have to let the uh, PD units get away from us so we can drop down behind them. Then we have to just trail a little bit. But he's right here, stopped uh, southbound southbound on the uh, Figueroa here uh, and he's on the phone right in the yeah no, it, yeah they're just south of Adams he's been on the phone for most of the pursuit here so it's a uh, it's a uh, you know who knows who he's what he's setting up or what he's doing or you know he could be even talking to his buddies just asking you know which channel's got the best shot I mean yeah. but they also do a deal where they they set up their escape plan they'll get their friends set up in an area where mm -hmm. their cars and they're able to you know, bail out, run over some fences, get through some yards, and then jump into another car. But like I said, there's two helicopters overhead. One's going to take the driver, one's going to take the passenger, and they're uh, they're not going to get away uh, at all. I mean, in this situation, this setup, uh, the ground units are surrounding the area. They're not in the in the pursuit uh, uh, right directly behind them, but they're keeping a close tabs on them. And once they start going, then uh, all of a sudden. Uh, you'll see a bunch of police cars show up in the area, but right now I'm just kind of holding back to the north, letting them fly away from us, and letting the air units uh, from the LAPD have their room. And uh, we're okay. It looks like we're going to make a uh, turn here on a little surface street off of Figueroa. Now we're eastbound back towards the uh, 110 freeway. This will go up to the service road that runs along the uh, freeway, and we'll see which way he's going to go from here. He's going to have to make a left or right turn at this point. Yeah, and he, and again, he's here. going slow now because of the tire. Oh, yeah. He's, he's not going to be able to uh, steer that very well as he goes along. LAPD is shot out ahead in front of him, and they're going to be uh, up to the intersection ahead of him. He's coming up to the new uh, USC basketball venue will be the next giant building you see in your shot here. So that will give you a reference of where we are. So uh, it's you know right by the building there. There he is. And Tim, I was going to ask you, uh, just as, as, as you were checking in with the tower before, uh, from your expertise as somebody who worked in law enforcement, as soon as that right front tire uh, lost all the rubber, does it change protocol for officers? Do, 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 they, do they move in closer or do they still keep back as far as they can, at least uh, what, what they determine to be a safe well, distance? And then, uh, and, and, well, you know, they, we're getting some new images right now really quickly, Tim, a, a ground level shot of what the suspects look like. As they were driving by in Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard, you could see that 101 sign right there, and then you're going to see the officers uh, passing by, moving slow, uh, but they do have some sort of formation as they move towards that vehicle. And again, I was just asking you, does it change? It uh, looks like they drove over that spike strip right there. That was uh, likely the moment they drove over that spike strip right there. But I was going to ask you, once they drive over that spike strip and the tires are damaged, does it change protocol at all? Uh, not, not really. I mean, the thing is, you don't want him going fast. You don't want to push him to make him go fast because he's going to lose control of the car and run into somebody. So they do their best to uh, keep an eye on him, you know, and, and not chase him as much as you can. But the thing is, like I said a couple times so far, is that these guys, they will continue to run. They will continue to run. And so uh, you see him here stopped on the side of the road. Uh, yeah, there he is. Uh, right parked, yeah, uh, just sitting at the red light, so we don't know what he's doing. I had to kind of maneuver to get the, uh, the uh, you can see he's on flower now, working his way uh, just paralleling the 110 freeway. Tim, I don't so, think he uh, knows what he's uh, doing. Exposition. <laughs> no, I don't think he does, to tell you the truth. I think he's pretty much, uh, pretty much just long for the ride here, trying to figure out where to go. And this is taking him back towards uh, Figueroa, the street he just got off of. 
Tim, and would, they Tim, will, would you uh, say it's surprising continue. to see how much ground he's covered, though? Because as you mentioned, starting in Cerritos, the you know, one it, 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 Yeah, it's a lot of ground. I mean, yeah, he's come all the way from Cerritos, like you said. He's up the up the freeways all through the mountains of uh, Hollywood and then back through Hollywood, now down through uh, South L.A. here by USC. Yeah, he's covered a lot Tim, of ground. Tim, really quickly, Tim, but, you, you know, have two officers, I think, with LAPD on the right side of our screen right there. It does appear that they're doing anything. Looks like they've <laughs> set up another spike strip. No, that he had a spike strip, but then he ran and put it back in there, and he's letting him go here. Uh, they, they'll do that, get ahead of him, and try to throw a spike strip. He might see one around the corner there is why he's stopping. But uh, we're just kind of fighting the uh, buildings, fighting traffic up here, and trying to get it. But these officers are going to do everything they can to get spikes on those uh, two back tires because that will end this pursuit pretty quickly, uh, hopefully, that they can get it on there. But he's back on to Figueroa now, southbound from Exposition. And uh, next uh, major he comes to will be MLK or Martin Luther King. And uh, I see uh, black and whites out ahead of him. So I you know have to see what they do here. Tim, what always surprises me of these pursuits is the confidence of the drivers and a lot of times the passengers that they just, you know, that, that police officers, they were right there and they're just on the phone going low speed of, you know, just cruising through with no care in the world as if they, they don't really care and now they're well, going to like, do something. Us, it looks like he's put his hands up, at least the gentleman, shouldn't really call him a gentleman, but the person right. in the right, the, the, the passenger seat there. Well... There's not really anybody behind him. They're they're holding back. There's about six police cars stopped way back behind him, so, so he's not being ordered to do anything. He's doing that all by himself. What and about the unit just went by him on the left. Yeah, shot right by him, and I was one out in front of him, getting ahead of him. So he's probably going to get ahead of him and try to set that spike strip. So uh, the other another unit has gone uh, by him as well, and so he's going to get out ahead and see what he can do to maybe put a little spike on this guy to keep him from. Uh, you know, going much further, but right now we're right on the edge of the LAX airspace. That's why I'm kind of holding out, and he's going so slow. I'm just holding back here, waiting for those LA air units to get out from underneath me here, so I can drop down a little bit more and clear the airspace uh, ahead of me. But uh, it's you know this guy, he's he's stuck now. I, I got a feeling he just run out of options. Now there's an LAPD area or police car ahead of him there. You see him there, and then he's going to deploy a spike strip. He's going to guy's going to run all the way over the side. Officer, see, uh, oh. he didn't deploy it uh, all the way out. He should have run out some more. The problem with that is you run out to try to throw that spike strip, and you might get hit by the car. So, I mean, there's been or officers shot. killed in that doing that procedure or shot. But, the, I mean, we've had officers really injured. And they're, they can't throw those things pretty good, but it looked like he got hung up in the tagline that hooks to that spike strip. So Tim, what's so interesting, it, it, it appears that the officer is somewhat communicating with those two suspects. One could only imagine what they're saying, but... One could only think the officer is saying, could you doing this? Yeah, 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 something like that. I'm sure if I was that police officer, I would be very <laughs> polite to this guy. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll just uh, let let that go. And, and I'm sure there was uh, some type of communication there to get him to, to go ahead and, uh, you know, pull over. But uh, uh, they might also be teasing with him about his throwing ability. Well, and so, also uh, and something people, else. Something else that we see a lot of times in the, these situations are people come out and they start and, let, uh, the upper ship get a little further and they start, start cheering, um, almost as if fans coming out to cheer the uh, the suspects on. Um, so I don't know if this is a neighborhood they're familiar with or people have just been watching this on TV and realize where they are, so they're coming out. But again, we've seen the passenger and the driver at times sitting on the back of the seat and waving and sometimes even directing directing traffic and thanking people for moving out of the way and then uh, almost acting like they're you know going to throw something if they don't get out of the way. Um, so this is uh, not totally different than what we're used to seeing, but just so brazen in the fact that they're just, they continue to go with to no going. tire on the on the right side. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, they're mugging for the folks on the side of the road, and yeah, I'm sure people now, we've been on the air now for an hour, hour and 25 minutes, so people have seen this on TV and, and know where it is, and they hear it southbound Figueroa, so they're going to start coming out. So our shot's going to get pretty long here because we're dealing with... Uh, the air units that are overhead uh, work in the pursuits. So we're giving them uh, a little room here so they can do their jobs, and we kind of hold back here and do our jobs. So I'm staying straight behind him uh, just to be able to keep a shot of him. I don't want to get low and uh, start having buildings get in the way. So uh, that's why you're seeing uh, such a long shot and not in front. So through 47th Street here, southbound Figueroa, uh, going pretty slow. So he's, he's pretty well crippled by that uh, 
right front tire being gone, and uh, LAPD is going to work up ahead of him and start trying to spike him ahead. Uh, I wouldn't doubt with this movement here. He doesn't have much much uh, room going uh, to the uh, left, so that'll take him to the Harbor Freeway. And there's only a few crossovers ahead. <laughs> you see people on the road there dancing and screaming. So, yeah, you're going to start picking up the looky lose on the side of the freeway or side of the road here as he works his way along. Uh, still moving on. I'm looking down ahead. Oh, he's putting I his blinker on. That's nice. I'm glad that he's signaling to yeah. take <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, why? You know. But, uh, yeah, get people running out in the street, and he's made that turn, and now he's going to come back out. This will put him over the uh, harbor, fr- actually under the harbor freeway. This could be and, a familiar and, uh, area. He turned right directly into a residential area, maybe some place that they're yeah. maybe or maybe not that they're well, bo- familiar with. Well, both sides of Figueroa here is a residential. For, uh, the whole area down here now is residential, so uh, any side streets that he goes on, yeah, he's, he, he's going to be able to, uh, you know, just be in houses in a second. Mm-hmm. That, that by, might be his uh, thought is to go ahead and get into the residential area and then uh, be able to bail out and get into somebody's house really quick. But uh, right now, uh, he's, we're just kind of all packed up in the same area. Uh all uh, packed up in the same area here trying to follow this along so yeah this is uh, when it gets tough is when we get in high trees and also buildings um it's kind of hard for because people don't realize that you're not the only helicopter up there right no i'm not i got uh, four other media helicopters with me and two police helicopters under me and so (laughs) it gets a little busy for me but it's not something we we're used to this we do we deal with this on a on a constant basis here you see the uh, right hand turn sign just went uh, getting ready to turn uh, eastbound here uh, through another residential street. He's being very and polite staying, now with his with oh, his blinker. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. thank he, goodness for that. We're, we're so happy he's being polite in his pursuit. <laughs> and yeah. one, th- one thing we could certainly uh, notice, at least from the television picture, it, it does appear the, the spike strip was successful in uh, blowing out the front right tire, but it looks like uh, the other three are intact, so it appears that at least one of the strategies for the officers chasing these suspects, they, they want to at least get one more tire in hopes of of stopping this vehicle. If you're just joining us, uh, we've been following this for about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, two burglary suspects started in Cerritos. It's been on the 101, the 110, Hollywood Boulevard, the Hollywood Hills, uh, back on the 101, uh, through Silver Lake, then through downtown. Uh, now they're in South Los Angeles. Uh, and we have seen this guy do almost everything. I think donuts on Hollywood Boulevard, uh, not not there we There's go the on the right left hand side this is all intentional uh the driver and the passenger as if they're just on a fun joy ride but also this has been extremely dangerous they were driving at high speeds um, on the opposite side of the road many times on two lane roads also on the freeway uh, going directly through stop signs through red lights uh, luckily it didn't hit any other vehicles i know it it bumped one vehicle at one point um, TMZ at one point on the 101, a bus, a TMZ bus tried to block them. They were able to get around that. And then the spike strip happened, which was great. Uh, the fact that the tire was um, popped and uh, now they are driving these two suspects in what we are assuming is a stolen vehicle. Um, and they only have three tires for the most part. Yeah, 62nd so Street, he just went through right there. He's on 62nd, just going through. Uh, about Avalon, I believe. They're just really, really slow. So, yeah, he may be looking for uh, looking for ground here. Uh, and not looking- really uh, pushing hard. So, and then we're hearing uh, now LA sheriffs are coming back down, possibly uh, going to start taking this back over. But right now, they're that's what I'm dealing with on the radio. To see if we have another sheriff's helicopter coming. But yeah, we're just going really slow. It's been disabled by that spike strip. Uh, I know they'd really love to get another spike strip on those uh, rear tires, which will take away the driving of ability there the speed availability of it so uh, right now he's going to go through a neighborhood here it's uh, the school right in this area as well mm. and uh, so we'll have to deal deal with that as it goes along but uh, LAPD doing a great job here just monitoring this pursuit staying by him, behind him as much as they can the air units doing uh, their jobs overhead a very coordinated pursuit here luckily nobody has been hurt uh, by his radical driving especially up the canyon roads where it could have been disastrous as he uh, went through there so he popped out you see right there 52nd street yeah turn it southbound from 52nd street and we're, we're just about a mile behind him so it's uh 
And uh, Tim, quite it, a it does appear that there's a, 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 a another vehicle that's now trailing the suspect, and it does not appear to be a law enforcement vehicle. No, that uh, white car. I saw it earlier. I didn't know what the deal was, but he's going so slow, and, you know, you can't there's tell you know what's what's the deal with it. Now you got another silver car following him as well. Uh, you know, so they they just might be just residents. You know, because there's no police cars around. There is no police cars on this street behind him now. So they have no idea what's going on. They're just people driving, or they could be uh, folks that are, are uh, helping out or trying to get involved. And now another third third car behind him. It's, anyway, so we're it's... Seeing, uh, we're seeing the passenger you know, in the vehicle now communicating with the vehicle that's behind him. Yeah, I don't think those are just yeah. residents. I have a feeling, because it seems like those cars would know that there's a pursuit going on in this beat-up car with two guys they wouldn't just be following them um maybe they're communicating with them in some capacity where they're going to jump in that car yeah it you know it's all what we can do i mean he's just going to have to push along with his tire knocked off and you know it's a, you know I, what are we going to what's what's he going to do he, and he got the cars behind him they've kind of bailed off of that if he was communicating with them uh, i don't know what he said but they're not not behind him they're now catching back up with him he has a big old pickup truck following him too or uh, utility truck following him so yeah there's no police cars around him they have no idea now he's turning back northbound here uh, in the residential this is off 52nd street working their way back right you see a license plate there for the desk if they want to try to grab that license plate as he's coming towards us uh, we'll see uh, where this car is registered out of well Tim it, it looks it like the or it looks like the front left of the vehicle has some damage and, and you've been over this since it started uh, we came on air I'd say close to about 10 minutes after but that that dent right there um, is that from hitting another vehicle that you remembered yeah he was trying to pass on the right hand shoulder and it was going pretty quick and a car kind of uh, got in his way and he oh now he got a guy right up next to him going on These here but yeah he clipped the car on the freeway well, well we we hope not yeah <laughs> but uh, other you know maybe somebody trying to get him to stop now there's a whole bunch of people here. We had a pursuit stop uh, a little bit further south of here the other day, and there was just a ton of people involved in the pursuit. Now he's out here talking here. Oh, it looks like he's, he's getting, getting out. Now the driver on, getting on out the of the car. Here's he's going to on the phone, standing there. That's, Tim, do we know there's if there no are police there? cars I know around here? Burglary suspects, but I can't remember if we made it clear if they are armed or if the police don't know. Police don't know, and you always uh, you always handle it as if they are armed but these guys are just mugging for the hood now as as they say and uh just walking away and there is no police cars around and uh they're slapping hands and hugging and yeah oh job well done guys yeah good 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 deal just uh give everybody a bad time on the freeways and come here and have a great time the sheriffs uh, uh are now coming towards this area lapd is trying to get units down here to grab these guys but, uh, Tim, did they just lose? Right now, their, did they lose them at some point, or what happened here? They backed off. LAPD uh, ground units backed off. Hold on, I'm trying to listen to the LAPD area, okay. LA County Sheriff's unit talk. It's okay. I mean, and uh, now Police Three is leave, leaving, and uh, LA County Sheriff's Eight's coming in, and okay. maybe they're going to get some sheriff's units down here try to bag this guy. I but think this you might see be one the there. They're just standing by the car. Yeah, something like this where they have now been sitting here for a minute and a half, shaking hands and hugging and sitting on the roof, all confident, basically waiting for the police or the sheriffs to show up, and no one is around. I, I'm assuming they lost track of them in some capacity and or backed off, as you mentioned, but why would they back off that far? He, he had no capacity to go fast and injure someone. Well, some, sometimes the... Uh the police departments will just decide we're following this guy he's just driving the way he's driving uh we're following him he's going to stop we'll get him when he stops and they stopped following him on the ground because at this point they don't want to they don't want to cause a problem for other uh, other drivers on the freeway and so you know they're just going to go ahead and back off let him go let the area unit follow him and then stuff like this will happen to where he'll come to a stop and right now, there's a there's a back and forth between LAPD and LA County Sheriffs of who's going to take control of this. And LA County Sheriffs is now coming into the area. Police three is still here, keeping an eye on him until that uh, sheriff's unit gets here. So, I think there's a little bit of back and forth in uh, deciding who's going to take responsibility for this pursuit. 
uh, for these suspects here now that they've come to a stop. And uh, I would just list, <laughs> you know, just the, list, the just listening is, to the uh, the. You need to listen to the radio. Right. No, no, I'm fine. I said just oh, okay. listening to what they're what they're saying is the, they're trying to coordinate the, the handoff on the air, and then eventually, I bet you the sheriffs on the ground will show up here. But they don't want to lose sight of these two guys until that sheriff unit gets here, gets eyes on them. Well, and at that point, then they'll make a decision what to do. Well, Tim, one thing that we saw that certainly made our blood boil is we're seeing these two suspects endangering lives of people all over L.A., and then they give high fives to their friends. But any, any sort of charges involved with, with, with the people they're high-fiving or maybe that vehicle that, that appeared to drive up right next to them and assist these suspects? I mean, one would have to imagine as, as authorities come closer to the suspects in the vehicle, the, the people that are around them are, are certainly going to have to, to move out of the area. Yeah, they're not gonna, there's not going to be any charges for the folks standing there. They're not really interfering with law enforcement. They're not getting, getting, in, the, getting in the way of uh, you know, the officers that do come in. But if they're just standing there as the policemen come in and move out of the way, then, yeah, no, it's, it, there, there's no crime for high-fiving your your, your neighborhood friends here uh, if they come to an end and Tim, i'm sure they all know this has been a long playing pursuit go ahead i have a question in terms of from a law perspective when they're coming into these guys are just standing here you don't know who's armed in the neighborhood you don't know if the suspects are armed there's traffic around there are excessive amounts of um other residents standing around so other people are going to be in harm's way if a shootout starts how, how do they even begin to approach these suspects well, uh, it depends. The air unit will come overhead, tell them that they're facing eastbound. The guy will come in from the, the south or from the west, from behind, or they'll just flood the area with uh, with units to try to uh, just you know, corral the folks around it because this is going to – stand by. Okay. Anyway, so uh, it, what they'll do is they'll just start getting units in here and then do this very coordinated because the street is completely stopped. A lot of folks, I know all the other streets are empty, so I know a lot of folks are just coming down to looky-loo this, uh, this ending here and see what's going on. But I'm looking out the window. I don't see one black and white within about four or five blocks that I can tell. But uh, they'll have to approach us very cautiously to take these guys into custody. Now they're going to have to be very careful of the folks around them because now you know, he's getting back in. We don't know if he's going to take off or not. But uh, they have to be careful of the folks around them because you don't know who's friendly friendly or foe on this. It's like he's going to be very polite here and move his car out of the yes, way so folks can drive by. Yes, we're glad he uses by. his blinker now and is moving out of the yeah. way. Clearing traffic. Yeah. So and then, then when the officers come here, they're going to have to be able to take these guys into custody and use, as I always say in law enforcement, force reasonable to effect the arrest because you're going to have a lot of people here who might want to join in to, to keep these guys from getting taken into custody or it may turn out. Your guy runs out and takes a selfie. Uh, this is, you know, this is L.A. This is the new social media. This is, in my book, completely ridiculous. It's now embarrassing. How this is all turned out. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is absolutely embarrassing. Mm. Well, uh, one would think if if, if you're yeah. encountering chase suspects, you, you'd probably want to stay clear of that area because you know law enforcement is is about to swarm on this area, and it's just it's amazing to see these folks are are coming oh, up to that. these chase suspects. It, what what appears to be an elderly person right there taking a selfie with a chase suspect uh you're seeing some bizarre well, behavior well you know what in in neighborhoods people would be running away from this and then there's neighborhoods where people do this yeah. uh it's just it turns into a circus event where there's no sense of responsibility no sense of uh hey we're doing something wrong and you get that crowd mentality going and stuff like this happens so well that's what know, i'm nervous I, I, about is getting two, a crowd mentality two LAPD units, three lapd units I've got three uh, police cars coming in from the uh, from the east. Chris, to your left, could be coming in from screen uh, left here. Okay. Uh, these are. Well, there's the see first vehicle comes right It'll be here. interesting to see how fast like people disappear. Suspect is his hands behind his back. So okay, he's, so he's, 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 he's giving up. He's giving up. Let me get the palm tree out. Yeah, they they knew it was coming, and I get palm the driver there in custody. And let's and, see what about uh, the passenger. Now the rest of them will come up. Can we look and, and we'll see, see what, what the passenger is doing? Yeah, right there. And hey, I, here I am, right here. I'm coming to you now. I got my hands up. And then so, that guy's, the other uh, guy's talking. He's being all. Yeah, yeah, they're. Well, these guys, I mugging, mean, as mugging, dumb as they've been all day, too. they're being smart right now. They're surrendering peacefully yes. and not causing oh, war. Absolutely. I mean, 
they, 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 yeah, at this point they don't want to they don't want to yeah. be silly at this point and you know and, i you know, i, I want to give credit to you know our sheriffs and lapd as well because you know in these situations they have to be very calm and very patient they're being yelled at for nothing they haven't done anything um they're being you know yelled at and probably called names and they're just upholding the law and so good for them you know being patient and being calm and arresting these guys and getting these dangerous alleged criminals off the street for today if you're just joining us here at yeah, the bottom but, of the hour uh i'm mark mester in for glenn walker alongside lou parker and we've been covering as you can see on your screen right there what's described as a very wild pursuit that started i'd say close to probably two hours ago and you're looking at the end of this pursuit but we've seen some r r remarkable images uh, involving this pursuit. We will have uh, much more coming up on the Cape Lake 5 News uh, later this afternoon, also at 6 as well as 6.30. Meantime, uh, we can finally take a break and get a check on this weather because, Kai, what you're seeing right now, it, it's wet outside. Yeah, wet situation. They de-escalate crowd control. We have reporters on the scene. We're going to wrap all this up for you on the NBC4 News coming up at 5 o'clock. More on the chase, uh, the crazy addicts, the donuts that they did driving down Hollywood Boulevard up uh, Mulholland Drive as officers now try to get people away so they can get these two guys off and book them. And they're going to take the third guy out of the car and put him in another vehicle. Megan might have been right. It might have been a tight squeeze. Once again, this is the area at 51st in Central. We want to remind you, too, you can watch a lot of the key moments of this chase on the NBCLA app. And we've posted some of the close calls that Chuck was talking about. We'll see you back here at 5.